so well, it's not just our giving in our finances. It's also our giving in our prayer, our time. Mm. You know, time is such a precious commodity. Yes. We give our time. Even the day of Antioch was taught and mentioned by the Apostle John. said a Christian spends his time for God. And last night, I have to be honest with you, I was out there walking and praying. I stopped by the gym in my community, and uh, I started doing little light, light exercises. And I found myself gravitating towards a television with a boxing match going on. I, I, I always like sports with boxing. And I kept watching, and I felt the Lord, and I felt convicted. I said, I'm wasting my time. I'm supposed to be praying right now, going back and forth between my exercises. And so I just kept feeling, oh, and I just felt the Lord saying, he convicted me. I'm wasting my time because I am an athlete for Jesus. And you can watch boxing match after boxing match, football game after football game, baseball game after baseball game, hockey game after hockey game, uh, all kinds of things the devil has devised to take our time away from God. We need to know when the Spirit says, shut it off. Come on. We need to know the balance that the Lord says, stop. It's time for prayer. Amen. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life. The, he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I was a Marine. I know what it's like when God calls you to be a Marine. Uh, or or you're, you're in that where you are, you know, dedicated. It takes everything when you're in boot camp. Amen. It takes everything when you're in training. Uh, they're not nonchalant. They're not just careless. It is complete obedience when they snap their heels to attention. Oh, okay. Forward. And they, they are very serious. Mm -hmm. And they're very serious about their training. They're not joking around. I remember one time we were training the Marines. And I don't want to talk too much about others. But I should. I should. I should not. I'm just going to say it. God, please forgive me if I'm wrong. They had Army Rangers training with us. And the army rangers were going, we were going to the confidence course. And the army rangers were laughing and giggling and carrying on while they were training. And we all trained seriously. And they were laughing. And they were having fun. Oh, we're going to the confidence course. We're going like, you know, drilling like our lives depend on it. Amen? Meanwhile, they're laughing and having fun through the confidence course. Going down ropes and climbing things. They're kind of laughing and giggling. We're like, go on, Marines, go, 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 move, move, move. And we're going real serious. And they're playing. I said, if you, you know, here's what I see. When you train, you fight like you train. Praise God. If you train and play around when you get on the football field or the battlefield, you're going to fight like you train. Amen. Praise God. So we always train like we meant it. When we did that, I, I, I'm not trying to glorify man, but when we did the, did the bayonet course, and you twist and you pull and it was like I mean, everything you have to make sure you did maximum damage mm. to your enemy and you kept going for it. Now I'm talking in the natural but in the spirit when we are fighting demonic powers we're not playing games beloved we're not <laughs> yeah this is fun no we are serious we're going forward with the armor of God because we can't kill any demon powers amen I can't slay any giants. David couldn't even get Goliath without the power of God yes. behind him. Amen? Mm -hmm. But when David went up, it says that uh, the, the Goliath came up, David went toward him. Uh -huh. David attacked him. David came with a holy boldness. Beloved, we need a holy boldness. Mm -hmm. We need a holy courage. We need a holy confidence and faith in our God that he which hath begun a good work in us will complete it. And having done all to stand, we stand therefore with the whole armor of God. Beloved, when we have that ironclad determination to pull down those strongholds, and when we really mean it, we'll take down demon powers in this area. Uh -huh. When we really give our hearts 100% to God, and we really repent over everything we can think of, and stop the worldly distractions that are, that are choking the word out of our hearts, we're going to pull down those strongholds, beloved. We're going to beat demon powers. And we're going to see the gifts of the power of God. Like I pray, this church, Global Impact, Church of Ministries, we believe God, we're going to see all nine gifts of the Spirit. Amen. It ain't going to be through me. It ain't going to be by my flesh. It's going to be by the sound. I can shout and everything. It's not by my voice, not by my holiness or power. But it's by His power. Amen. Feel the Lord tell me to calm down right now. It's His power. Not the strength of a man's voice. 
Not the hype of a man's voice. Come on. I'm excited right now. I have a holy passion. But the Lord is saying, ho, ho. Amen. It's all about Him. Amen. Don't you take the glory. Amen. When God heals somebody, here's what's going to happen. It's happened to tie past the body of Christ. Oh, pastor. Oh, evangelist. Wow, you are so spiritual. Mm -hmm. And the church lifts up this guy, and this guy or woman gets exalted above measure, and guess what? The devil gets in there and ruins everything. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to have a heart that's so dedicated to God that when people want to pat you on the back and give you praise from men, that you're ready to rent your clothes like the apostles did. We are men of like passions as well as you. You think it's by our own holiness or power? That we've done this? No, it's by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by His Spirit that did these things through you.